Hey, welcome to Brightworks. So, uh, if you followed our channel, you've seen a lot of this motor, but uh, what we're ready to do now is set the cam timing. So, I have found top dead center using the Digi Dicks from Stomsky Racing, and I have had this thing for a long, long time. And boy, I'll tell you what, the Z1 mark on the pulley is pretty damn accurate. This one, maybe it's the leading edge of the Z1, but uh, uh, this is true zero right now where this is based on using a top dead center um, calculation. So what we've, we've got the uh, cams roughed in and basically we're at um, uh, basically just putting the uh, dots up and we've got our uh, indicator set up here. So right now we are on TDC for cylinder one. And I've only put the one rocker in, we'll do number four after, but we just wanna see how good is, uh, how good is dots up. So we turn this guy on and we're gonna go 360 degrees around. Now our cam grinder told us, um, I don't really wanna call him a cam, gr cam grinder, the guy's a damn magician. But he told us that uh, he wants us to set these cams. These are CIS Plus cams. Um, that's what I call them. Uh, he wants us to set these with 1.4 to 1.52 millimeters of lift at uh, 360 degree rotation here. So we're gonna go all the way around and see our Z1 spot starting to come up over here. We still have not moved the rocker. And yes, of course, we set the lash on that guy at uh, 0.1 millimeters. So we're at 335 degrees. And then now we start to see the cam move around 345 degrees for what, uh, five hundredths of a, a millimeter open. All right, so we're gonna take this guy right up to the 360. And that 360 is right there. We're back at zero and we're at point four or eight uh, millimeters of lift. So what's really cool about the DigiDix, whether you're finding TDC or not, is it gives you an idea of how far do we need to change the cam. So for example, I'm gonna try and get this guy, I'm gonna split the difference here, right? So we're gonna go to like one, four, eight. Um, and we're looking at this gauge over here to take us to one, four, eight so it's slowly climbing just hit one now we're at one two there's one four one four six we'll call one four six good because that would be right in the middle of those two so at one four four six so we need to move the crank in relation to the camshaft 12.6 degrees so we're going to pull the crank back or we're gonna move the cam forward. So 12.6 degrees, it might only be one hole off on the sprocket. Might be two, but uh, we'll check that out. So roughed in, we're 12 degrees off. So you know what, the motor would run. It just wouldn't have all the, all the pep that it's supposed to. So that 146 number is what we're gonna be targeting. So we're gonna take all this stuff apart down here we're gonna move the cam by, uh, or move the sprocket by one hole, and we're gonna see if that gets us where we need to go. So we'll, uh, we'll do all that, and then we'll show you the results on the back end. But uh, if you are timing your cams, make sure you get everything set up. And eventually this guy is gonna get hydraulic uh, chain tensioners, but the hydraulic chain tensioners just don't really put enough on the, uh, on the chain when they're not running and vibrating. So we use these uh, mechanical tensioners just to get the right uh, amount of tension on the chain because you can change that number, right? If I make it tighter, that number goes down. So I'm pushing on it to make it tighter. The number went down to 142. So you're talking about eh, maybe half of a millimeter that we can get out of the, out of the lift. So our tolerance is, uh, uh, what, tenth of a millimeter, 0. 0.12. 
So we definitely want to make sure we, uh, we address that. All right, we're going to get all that stuff taken apart, move that uh, pin one, uh, one hole on sprocket, and we will get back with you and see what it turns out to be. So this is a classic example, not the first time, but um, when you torque down the cam nut, and that goes to 110 foot-pounds, so it's pretty serious, but you torque it down, put your new tensioner in, brand spanking new, and then uh, roll everything over just to verify. Well, now you're out of spec. So 1.4 to 1.52, I would have taken 155, 158 because this thing is only going to get tighter when it's running. So even as tight as I can make it, it only pulls it back. I don't know, maybe uh, what is that, a hundredth? So what that means is we're going to go back in and try it again. But uh, I think it has to do because. A lot of people don't double check it after you torque it. Um, but as you get that last little bit of the camshaft to come out and the spacer gear to go in, um, your uh, little uh, pickup point there gets tighter or looser. And there's enough slop in there for maybe a half of a millimeter. So a half, I mean 0.05. Um, so, son of a bitch, everything's torqued, it's all got to come back apart, we got to go one, uh, one no notch over on the sprocket. So, yes, we will go do that, and, uh, hey, could have just backed off the adjuster, showed you guys here on YouTube how perfect it was, but, uh, no, we're not going to do that, because the cam is designed... <laughs> for optimal ignition at that point. So we're gonna get as close to that as we can. All right, so we said we were going for uh, 146, 148. We are at 149. And on this side, when the chain gets tighter, because right now it's just the tensioner, um, no, nothing. But when the chain gets tighter on this side, it goes down. So. If that little sucker gets tighter, lots of debate on that um, because the spring is the primary mechanism. But if that little guy gets tighter, we are right at that 148. But we're well within the 14 to 152. So uh, excellent on the left hand side. So this one required pulling the sprocket out, moving it around, finding a new hole, and then putting it all back together and then moving it one more hole after you saw the last, uh, when this guy was up at 1.6. So, torqued up, that side is officially done. Now we'll move on to the right side, and uh, we only put one rocker in over here, so we're only gonna put one rocker in over there, and that way, if we have to make any major changes, we've only got one rocker installed, plus the cam moves a whole lot easier when it's only got the one rocker that it's uh, it's trying to work against all these uh, valve springs. So that's a tip. Just put the the one, number one intake, number four intake, and uh, this whole thing gets a lot easier. It's easier to roll the motor over everything. All right, we're gonna get on to the right side and see what happens. All right, so now we have something of a conundrum. So in setting the right-hand side cams, we ended up having to go two uh, holes on the sprocket over but what it's done is it's got us to 1.55 millimeters and we're looking for 152 so if we roll this guy all the way over again and we find our zero mark right about oops a little far 152 which is target all right, one four to one five two. So this is pretty tight tolerance on these cams. And now when we go over to the right hand side, we'll go to three sixty right there. We're at one five seven. 
157, but if we tighten up the chain a little bit, drops to 152. However, it comes back to 155. So what we're gonna do on the right-hand side, it's, it's three one-hundredths of a millimeter. Normally, the, I think on the SCs, it's like one four to one seven. So you got a huge gap of, of what you're trying to set. But we're gonna see if we can get that two one-hundredths of a uh, millimeter or maybe a little more back by pulling the sprocket out, changing the sprocket orientation and seeing if it, when it lines up differently if, uh, if we can get those tolerances to meet. So 155 against 152, yeah, it's ballpark, but hey, you know what? Our cam guy sent us specs, and we're gonna do everything we can during the assembly to, uh, to get inside those specs. So we're gonna get on with it. All right, and there you have it. We are at 1.52 on the right-hand side. And if we spin this guy, over 360 degrees to put him on number one. Take this right up to 360 degrees. There we are at zero and we're at 1.50 on the left side. So 1.50 on the left, 1.52 on the right. We're within two one hundredths of a millimeter on a, let's see, it's 84, 94, 2004, 2014, almost 50 year old motor. And uh, let's see, the only parts in here that were replaced, well, there was actually a lot replaced. We did the bronze bushings on the uh, uh, chain followers, put in the hydraulic tensioners, and of course, new chains. So I'm gonna say that uh, we're gonna call this good. And the best part is everything's torqued up and we're ready to slap some covers on. We'll prime these guys a little bit with some oil, but not too much because we don't want it to compromise the, uh, the seal. So that's one of the trade-offs you'll have to make is do we prime this all the way or do we want a good seal? So once the seal's dry and everything like that, what you can do is when you first fill the engine with uh, oil, you can turn the engine over by hand and get all that stuff uh, flowing. But uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Little Took a little longer than usual. Every once in a while you put them in and you're like, wow, it's straight on perfect. But uh, Sometimes they fight you and you got to take sprocket out, patience, move it around, find a new hole, and then uh, put it all back together. But we are going to call this cam timing event complete. So thanks for following along. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button. You can also check us out at brightworks.com. And uh, yeah, if you've got a mag motor or a Porsche air-cooled motor, give us a call and have a fabulous day.